You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Radio Public, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 18th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we stand with Chicago public teachers, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. We sure do. Yes, we do. Go teachers' unions. Mm -hmm. And Drift Glass and I both come from a family of teachers. We do. We so do. this is uh, personal to us. The when, Chicago public teachers are on strike, and uh, the YMCA is feeding children during yep. the day because that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I found that out is uh, Donald Trump's Dallas rally last night uh, decided to warm up the crowd by playing YMCA. Yeah, odd choice. <laughs> the Village People song. Uh, gay anthem and uh, everybody dancing along to that one. And I know that's a popular dance and song at baseball games and so forth. But sure. uh, in the midst of a Trump rally, it was pretty jarring. Uh, but go, go teachers unions and, you know, what they're asking for, like a nurse in every school. Yeah. yeah. Crazy stuff like that. Yeah, Great. not unreasonable. Well, and, not and unreasonable. I, I mean, my mom and dad were uh, uh, school teacher and principal. They got divorced. He married principal. She married a uh, teacher. My sister was a teacher. Uh, my former brother in law is a teacher. Um, I swore a mighty oath I would never, ever, ever work for the government or become a teacher. I, for a brief stint, worked for the government and was a teacher. So <laughs> uh, apparently, they just it just keeps dragging you in. But we have enormous respect for all of those people who work tirelessly behind the scenes to get um, things done in our culture and, and in our society and in our towns and cities and don't get thanked nearly enough, which leads us to thank Tammy once again, yes. our angel nerd, um, without whom we would not have a website and we wouldn't have a presence on YouTube. Uh, and I'd have to figure out a whole lot of things that intimidate me. So, so <laughs> who's just endlessly helpful to us. I mean, and, yeah. and we continue, this also includes people who contribute, people who, who write us, people who sort of form the, the little community we have around this podcast. Um, we really do thank you all for making us possible. I mean, we'd still yep. be having this conversation regardless of the microphone being present because that's right. who we are. We would. But without you guys and without Tammy, people like Tammy, we just wouldn't have a podcast. And that. Yeah. Would... Well, and without the people who donate $5 a month to us on PayPal. Yeah. We wouldn't pay our electric bill, so yeah, I'm, it's literally, that simple. so it's literally that's that it's just that simple. This is this is our job. I mean, we have a lot of jobs. Blue Gal works for Crooks and Liars, as everyone knows, and everyone I know has four jobs: the small, mm -hmm. large, and in between. And, and I'm looking for more. I'm always looking for a job. I'm applying for. I applied for jobs this week. Yeah, but this is definitely a job. We enjoy doing it. It's, we love doing it, but it's labor, and uh, we are strong believers that labor should be rewarded. Right. The mm, the period worker is worthy of their hire so yes, uh, we appreciate you and thank you this was quite a week <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do we're going to do things a little bit differently um we're going to start today with our news roundup and discuss it as we go yeah and then as uh we get, when we get done with that we'll uh, highlight a few themes that we want to talk about this week and yeah we it's get things it's done. hard to do i mean Part of what we try to do, as as regular listeners know, is not just cover the news that any, happens during every given week because there's just way too much to do, but put our arms around it as far as we can and give you context and vocabulary mm -hmm. for understanding mm -hmm. where you are in this big ocean, that there are landmarks you can look to and things you should look for. And that's, I think, the value we add to the conversation that all of right. us are having all the time. Um, well, and unlike unlike what I see on the conservative side of things. And yes, I'm biased. <laughs> yes, I am too. Uh, my, my sense is that our progressive friends are not in this to uh, win something against conservatives. No, that there's, we're not here. This isn't a baseball game or a sporting event of any kind. We're not here to own anybody. Um, we care about people and we care about the future of this country and we care about our democracy. And so what I see and what I hear from people who write us 
is that the impeachment of Donald Trump, while we all agree it has to happen and his removal from office has to happen, it's right. still very upsetting. And it's not mm-hmm. upsetting because we love Donald Trump. Obviously, we don't. But it's upsetting because it's happening to our country and our democracy. And Donald Trump is happening to our country and our democracy. And all of that is upsetting. And so I get it when Nancy Pelosi says, yes, I'm praying for the president. I'm praying for our country. I want uh, stability and I I don't want any harm to come to anyone. Uh, But at the same time, our democracy and our constitution demand that this criminal be removed from office. That is a painful process. And that's a painful process for anyone that cares about America. Well, and, and people were not kissing in Times Square on VE Day because they right. liked World War II. Right. They were right. kissing because they were they were thrilled that it was over or relieved, coming to yeah. a close. They were incredibly yeah. relieved. The and and it is long past time to pick a side. Yeah. I mean, if you want to call, call it tribalism or partisan uh, partisanship, go right ahead. One party in this country has tied an anvil around the throat of our country and is trying to throw us off a cliff. Mm-hmm. And, and the other party is trying to stop them from doing that. And if you want to stand aside and try to be morally neutral and say, well, both sides, uh, then you're part of the problem because we need all hands on deck. And yes, we're on the side of getting the untied from around the throat of the country and keeping the crazy people who are trying to wreck this place and think Donald Trump is the second coming of the risen Christ from doing any more harm than they've already done yeah. and getting them electorally neutered to the point where they can't break our country anymore. And and while we try to fix it, let's not do a repeat of the Obama administration. Yeah. While, yeah. while we were trying very slowly, a painful inch at a time to fix the problems, they were free to sabotage and slander and destroy and limit and stab in the back. Um, no more of that. No more of like, you know, we're just going to let them off the hook this time because there's so much, so many fires to be put up. No, 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 no. We're going to lock the arsonists up electorally so they can't start any more goddamn fires while we're cleaning up the messes they've already made. And I'm grateful that this movie that's coming out, Harriet, about Harriet Tubman, Mm-hmm. Is I hear good things out. about Harriet Tubman. She's uh, popular and she <laughs> popular. does a lot She's of a good, good stuff. Person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, underappreciated, really, uh, these days. It's an important lesson for us, I think, as white people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk about myself as a white lady for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of us are are thinking or saying, on, I've seen a lot of us saying on Twitter, you know, I want to go back to the time where I could be bored with politics and not have to think about it every single day and be in a panic all the time. Uh-huh. And uh, when was that? <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, black women are going, yeah, really? Mm-hmm. Really? You think politics is something that you just can kind of step away from and go garden for a while? Because yeah. that's not how life is for those of us in the minority or people that are being oppressed. Don't get that opportunity. Right. And so this lesson from Harriet of she got out, Pretty you good. know, she got out yeah. and she escaped and she... It was hard, and she got out, and she was done with slavery. And the first thing she said was, don't raise my taxes one nickel, (laughs) right? That's what she said. Those were her priorities. She said, look, I I stopped paying payroll taxes in January. Right. right. That's it. Medicare for what? The first thing she did is turn around and go help others. She went back. She went Uh fucking back to a, a land that wanted to enslave her. Yeah, or kill her. And she tur- or to kill her. And she turned around and went back into that battle. And that's what we're going to have to do. Mm-hmm. I, I hope the next president recognizes that uh, the campaign never stops and that you keep registering voters and you keep winning local elections and you are partisan. I mean, we got to do mm-hmm. the Harry Truman and FDR thing of, you know, FDR, I welcome their hatred. and. Yeah. Uh, Harry Truman saying, "God damn right, I'm partisan. You get, yeah, God damn right, yeah. I, I object to their politics." And that's what he said in public. What he said in private. <laughs> Poor Bess. Yeah. <laughs> she she yeah. Had, she had a lot of work to do just to get him to say she manure. Did. Just <laughs> right? to say manure. You know how hard I had to work to get him to say manure. Get him to yeah. say manure, right? Yeah. And then the other thing I wanted to report this week um, in family news. Mm-hmm. First of all, Junior Dude turns 21 on Monday. That's yes, how, he does. Uh, that's where we're at is I now have a 21 year old son and it's the end times, honey, it's the end times. <laughs> Let's just drink all the booze and go, go to sleep. So uh happy birthday, junior dude. 
I had a I had a chat this week with Middle Child, and it uh-huh. was during a time when there was just you know nonstop Trump action, which is all the time. But something was going on this week, and I just turned to Middle Child, who's who, by the way, got her voter registration card in the mail this week because she mm-hmm. gets to vote in the primary because she will be eighteen in it's November of, election. That's of right. 2020. Right. And she signed her first petition. She this signed week. her first to get Bert, Betsy Dirksen Londrigan on the ballot. So mm-hmm. very, very excited for her. But I said to her, please don't uh, allow your generation to elect someone this stupid. And she said, mom, I can't promise that. <laughs> but then she paused and she said, Republicans? No. <laughs> yeah. No, but we over. might elect somebody stupid, but sure. Republicans, no. <laughs> I said, all right, that's yeah. good enough for me. <laughs> she she, uh, and her sister, the, to- the lack of tolerance that our children and their friends have for Donald Trump and the Republican Party and how they carry out uh, what is happening with Trump to the entire Republican Party. I know that's the yes. fish tank in which they swim here. Yep, but yep. Uh, good. they've also them, come yeah. to that on their own quite a bit, which is yeah. why are why aren't they removing him from office? What and, a good question! Uh, and they also, uh, youngest child's taking a a current events class. I think I've mentioned this before, and mm-hmm. uh, she and her sister were talking about impeachment. And uh, youngest child said, "Well, you know, just because Donald Trump gets impeached doesn't mean he'll be removed from office." She said with a great deal of authority. <laughs> Yes. And uh, middle child said, yeah, but it's a big old fuck you in the history books. <laughs> <laughs> and there's mom on the couch knitting like Madame Lafarge going, yes. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. excellent. <laughs> I do allow my children to swear at home. <laughs> yeah. Well, they understand the nuances of the law and the Constitution. Yes. And they understand what a big fuck you means. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's pretty what, – what more can any parent ask no, for exactly. than to understand it's those two aspects of It's a big old fuck you in the history life. books. Trust me. It's there a good the, thing to there impeach are the him. Rules. Yeah, yeah. There are the rules, and then there's all the important stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's an important and thing to And they know when not to swear, so uh, yes, they good do. for them. All right, so let's start with the news roundup, and then we'll uh, take off from there. Sure. Well, would you like to know about acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney? Who's a lawyer, soon to be by the fired. way. <laughs> yeah, who's definitely a lawyer. <laughs> Um, and who's soon to be fired, I'm guessing. Um, I'm just saying, speculating idly that he can't be long for this earth. He did confirm that Donald Trump blocked military aid to Ukraine to force Kiev to investigate his political rivals. He called the quid pro quo exchange, quote, absolutely appropriate, and that we do it all the time with foreign policy. And he said, I have news for everybody. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. Now, way to beat. With another beat, a couple of hours later, he walked it all back. Yeah, but the toothpaste was, was out of the tube. It's like <laughs> perfect. The, and this is this is this is straight Nixon Vietnam. Oh stuff. yeah, this is the yesterday's statements are longer operative. Yes, right. Um, we're just going to pretend, and it's it is kind of heartening to watch the bottom of not only the bottom of the atrocity barrel because there's no bottom with Republicans, but. How they have nobody left on their bench who is smart. No, <laughs> that's right. Anything. Everybody's quit. They're all fuck yeah, ups. Yeah, and so you have this sort of and and it's you're going through your lineup looking for anyone you can throw in front of the camera who's not a complete embarrassment, and there aren't any left. They're all gone. They're all Mulvaney's. Like, that it's Giuliani's all the way down. Yes, so, it's Giuliani's you know, all the way down. Hey, uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, breaking news that we missed last week, just by under the wire of recording. We uh-huh. had finished recording and this happened. And it, I always yes. kick myself on Friday afternoons when we finish recording, something like this happens. Attorney General William Barr privately met with Rupert Murdoch days before Shep Smith abruptly left Fox News on Friday. Mm-hmm. Smith's departure mm-hmm. followed attacks by Trump on Twitter in recent weeks and months. Uh, He also fought with Trump allies on the air. And uh, as you pointed out and and quoted someone on Twitter saying, you know, a 15 million dollar contract isn't cut off like this. This is not normal. This is not how this is done. Yeah. Yeah. This is not how this is done at all. Uh, Gordon Sundland, who thought uh, being ambassador to the EU meant Europe and Ukraine, (laughs) but that's not true. 
Um, Gordon Sutherland said, uh, told the House impeachment investigators that Trump delegated American foreign policy on Ukraine to Rudy Giuliani. He said that he and other officials were, quote, disappointed by Trump's directive uh, for U.S. diplomats to work with Giuliani on matters related to the Ukraine. I, he's pleading stupid. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to get, I don't think he's going to get away with it. Cause I don't think the calendar agrees with him. I think he's just, at some point you have to be willfully dumb to protect yourself and just pretend that you don't hear, you know, daddy in the next room, smashing the furniture. Um, but he's a grown ass man who paid a million dollars for this job. Right. And there's no, well, he paid a million dollars for a job and then went off and said he was in charge of Ukraine, which right. he's not. So this is right. Th- the absurdity of everything he's saying is is obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now Fiona Hill, this is you, but I is, didn't she play Lilla Fair a few no, years ago? No, sure she, no, no. But okay. there are some kick-ass women kicking t- Trump's ass this week, and I'm very, very proud of my gender this week in that regard. Fiona Hill, uh, the White House's former top Russia advisor, told impeachment investigators that Rudy Giuliani ran a shadow foreign policy in Ukraine that circumvented U.S. officials and career diplomats in order to personally benefit Trump. Hill served as the senior official for Russia and Europe on the National Security Council, and she testified before the impeachment investigators for nine hours. Yeah, nine hours. And was apparently was was mesmerizing. Um, she told all. Rick Perry, on the other hand, who is now the former energy secretary because he quit today i believe after saying he wasn't going to quit there's a lot of that going on i'm not quitting i'm not quitting i'm not quitting gone bye and i you have to assume this is just rats well and and, you Um, know dancing with the stars is looking better and better as a repeat Mm -hmm. performance yeah well and and uh, perry said that he he talked to giuliani he worked with giuliani who should have had nothing whatsoever to do with anything to do with foreign policy since he is not a white house staff member and has not been vetted by anyone he's just donald trump's personal fucking lawyer he's his ambulance chaser what he's doing out there calling plays on foreign policy is anyone's guess it's all impeachable by the way now uh while perry said that giuliani didn't make any explicit demands giuliani did blame ukraine for the steel dossier and claimed that Ukraine had had Hillary Clinton's email server and accused Ukraine of helping send Paul Manafort to prison. So he said, I have a giant conspiracy sandwich with lots of little conspiracies in it, and we're going to start doing stuff that gets Ukraine on our side, but I'm not going to say specifically that we're going to demand anything because that might put you in a weird position. And if you start hearing Giuliani, if you heard anybody raving about this shit, you would ask, you'd leave the room and get their their handlers mm-hmm. to come and take them away, not put them in charge of anything. But this is this is where well, we are and now. Paul Manafort being in prison is real inconvenient to a lot of people. Uh, it Kevin is. McCarthy lost his shit this week with a reporter who reminded him that uh, you know Paul Manafort is in jail, <laughs> in an American jail, yeah. prosecuted by American prosecutors, tried in an American court, and convicted yeah. uh, by an American yeah. judge, American jury, etc. And uh, that just doesn't uh, fit with all these conspiracy theories that Ukraine did everything to help Hillary. And if that, if. (laughs) Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Who say that? If that's the case, if if all these conspiracy theories are true, then American justice has framed Paul Manafort and thrown him in jail. Now. (laughs) And we need a better term than conspiracy theory because theory gives it the, the. the imprimatur of something like the right. theory no, of gravity no. or the this theory is of relativity. Spinning no. conspiracies, right. This is bullshit. bullshit. Crazy ass crackpot bullshit, conspiracy bullshit. Crackpot bullshit. That's a better mm-hmm. word for it. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Bolton, <laughs> who's become a hero. I can't stand no, it. He He's, not He's not a not. hero, He's just, everybody. Not he a just hero. Has a, he has a mammalian sense of self preservation. Exactly. Yeah. He was so alarmed by Giuliani's politically motivated activities to get the Ukrainians to investigate Trump's political opponents. They compared it to a drug deal. He also informed White House attorneys of what was going on. Yeah. Uh, attorneys That's for the White out. House, not attorneys for Trump, that they're two different right. things. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was paid half a million dollars to consult for a company co-founded by the same Ukrainian-American businessman who was arrested last week for campaign finance charges. 
I would like to point out that I have never been paid a half a million dollars for anything. And he then his argument against that was, well, that's just a small contract. You don't need to worry about that. I get paid three and four. My company gets three or four million dollar contracts. This is nothing. Yeah, Uh, this is just small crime. I'm just doing small crime. Small crimes don't count. (laughs) I'm America's mayor. You know, I was just thinking, you said, you said you've never been paid half a million dollars for anything. We have never paid half a million dollars for anything. Also true. You know, our house is worth a quarter of that. So yeah, yeah no, no, never. My, my never. condo came close. My condo came close, yeah. but that was a lifetime ago. Yeah. Chicago condo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yes, indeed. You didn't pay that off. No, no, no. It's not like like you bought it for that money. (laughs) I found a Ukrainian drug dealer who's willing to pay cash, and things just worked out. I can't say anything other than, you know, (laughs) Vlad and Igor were dear, dear friends of mine for about a week. Gosh. Today in Lawless White House stonewalling, Giuliani won't comply with a congressional subpoena for documents related to the impeachment investigation. He called the impeachment inquiry an abomination and dared House Democrats to take him to court, saying if they enforce it, then, quoting Donald Trump all the time, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And and Pence also said he would not comply with a request from the House impeachment investigators for documents related to Trump's July 25th call with Zelensky. And the Office of Management and Budget, which is, uh, in addition to being chief of staff, (laughs) <laughs> Mick Mulvaney also Mick runs that. Mulvaney also running this thing yeah. uh, will not comply with a congressional subpoena over documents about withholding military aid to Ukraine. All these people need to go to jail. Yes. Here's another person that needs to go to jail. Donald John Trump, who this week sent a letter to Turkish President Erdogan uh, urging him to make a deal with the Kurds saying, don't be a tough guy. Don't be a fool. Trump also warned Erdogan not to let the world down by invading northern Syria. That letter was sent on October 9th. Uh, three days later, after the two had spoken on the phone, the same day of the Turkish incursion to Syria, in the immortal words of Paper Lace, I heard he threw the letter away. <laughs> yes, they're going to have to in the trash because Donald Trump is a ridiculous buffoon who is a stooge of Ergodan and Putin and various sheiks in the Middle East and pretty much uh, oh, and Kim Jong-un, of course. Any any tyrant in the world, I swear there's a packet of, of 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 porn and worse about Donald Trump. They just pass it around among themselves. Whose turn is it this week to get Donald Trump to suck their dick? Oh, it's yours? Okay, here you go. Well, and, and today er- Ergodon had a press conference in which he said that the military incursion into Syria was a response to that letter. So well, yeah. he threw it in the trash and then he said, that's it. Go invade Syria. Go do yeah. it. Uh, yeah, sweep the leg, and that's what he did. So, it, but remember, none of this would have happened, uh, according to Liz Cheney, <laughs> if Democrats had not impeached or tried to impeach Donald Trump. Because there's just a mad lib thing they do where the bad thing that happened is on one side of the page, and a bunch of bumper stickers are on the other side. So Vince Foster made Donald Trump grab that woman's pussy. See, and for a third of the people in this country. That sentence made perfect sense. Yeah. I'm not going to even say, I don't want to be accused of inciting violence. So I'm just not going to say anything about Liz Cheney. That's it. No. She just Um, shouldn't be in in public service ever. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, In fact, I think she's one of the worst people in public service right now. Yes. And she is definitely the spawn of her father, who is one of the worst human beings ever to occupy public office in American history. Trump decided that the Trump National Doral Miami Golf Club will win the uh, G Summit as a locale yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> next, next year. Uh, yeah, and and uh, everybody says, yeah, that's corruption. You know what? That's yeah. corruption. As, as someone said that he awarded himself a, a government contract. He did. He, he absolutely uh, uh, did. Uh, yeah. And uh, I love how people are calling it the Bedbug Summit. Yeah, um, it is. That's, and it's gonna, that's, that will live on. It's a chintzy hotel. So, yeah. It, it, yeah. And it's in the and it's been losing money for the last I don't know five six seven years something like that and it's in Florida in the middle of summer yeah, which nobody which is wants empty to do. then so everyone leaves Florida in the middle of summer precisely because nobody wants to be there and you know we can only hope no hurricanes will come oh, along geez. and you know yeah. rain on things um, Donald Trump vetoed a bill that would have ended his national emergency declaration at the U.S. southern border uh, the veto which was expected 
send it back to Congress where it's very unlikely that they will override it. This is uh, virtually identical to a bill that Trump vetoed seven months ago. So he is, by God, going to, going to continue declaring a national emergency along the southern border so he can loot the Treasury to try to build his stupid fucking wall. And uh, federal, which is federal why, courts are not not friendly to this. So no, he's which lying is why about this. Yeah. The proper answer, let's repeat it for mm-hmm. those of you in the back. Yeah. The proper answer for every Democratic candidate when asked about how you're going to pay for anything is Mexico's Mexico will pay, pay for, for it. it. Period. That's the only answer you ever need to give because that's the only answer that anyone ever needs to give. Hello, John Dean. The White House is conducting its own investigation. I love this. <laughs> Why yeah. did a rough transcript of Trump's July 25th call with the Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, was placed into a secret server for secure storage, a secret Pentagon server? This mm-hmm. is a Defense Department server that's only supposed to have top secret clearance, and they uh, decided that was a great place to tuck away Trump's call with Zelensky. Yeah. Much to my surprise, it was Mike Pence all along. <laughs> Pence, it's all Pence. Pence did it. Wasn't me. I wasn't even there. I was playing golf. Pence is behind it all. That this is what they tried to set up John Dean for in Watergate, yeah. just for reference. Yeah. This is they sent John Dean to Camp David to say Nixon says, "Oh, go get me a summary of all the crazy shit people were doing." And it took about John Dean about a minute to figure out. Oh, I'm going to write a report about all the illegal shit that went on in your White House with your approval. And you're going to pretend it's the first time you've ever seen it and blame it on me. And I'm going to go to jail. Mm-hmm. So, no, I'm not going to cooperate. I'm going to go straight to the impeachment office and start talking to federal prosecutors about all the shit I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what's going on here. The White House is trying to pretend they're having their own investigation, which will miraculously clear everyone involved, all of Donald Trump's friends. and, and Except cronies. the people that he's fired. <laughs> right. Except for the bad people who have to go out the door. Michael McKinley, who resigned as a senior advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, testified that he quit because career diplomats had been sidelined on Ukraine. McKinley testified about how experts had been sidelined as Trump ran his own shadow foreign policy to pursue his own agenda on Ukraine. McKinley also testified that he repeatedly asked Pompeo for a show of support. So uh, Pompeo knew, everybody knew. Speaking of things people know, everyone knows there's federal investigation into Giuliani's business with these two assholes, the campaign finance portion. What came to light recently is that there is a counterintelligence component to that investigation, which means a whole different level of uh, rectal exam for Rudy Giuliani by a whole different set of agencies. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. Rudy's going to go to jail. Yep. Um, Yeah. I I don't think there's at any point down the road where Rudy's going to ever recover from this. I've been wrong before. I've been wrong before I admit it, but this is so very bad. And there's no, there's no more cover. There's no, there's no other places yeah, for them to hide. All they can go is, is under the umbrella of Putin and go yeah. hide in Ukraine or hide somewhere and expect Putin to support you, which I don't know. Good luck. Good luck with that. Uh, Democratic leaders walked out of a white house meeting with Trump after he had a meltdown. He sure did. Uh, He Mm -hmm. called House Speaker Nancy Pelosi a third-rate or third-grade politician. It's not clear. And uh, she is praying for his health now. Um, He... The White House released a picture of her standing up to him and... Yeah. uh, As if to to say (laughs) this is her being bad. And it really is... Look at her control lady. They're so blind. There really are blinders as to what right and wrong is and and Mm -hmm. what things look like. They released the transcript of this or the written write up of the phone call. They released the letter. Trump handed out copies of this letter to Ergodon as a thing. Mm-hmm. And everyone thought it was fake until people in the room said, no, it's not. He really no, did this. He really, he really And then he released this. this photo of her like a boss standing up to him. And, right. all, and you know, it, it's like someone standing up to Hitler and saying, no, you're conducting a Holocaust. You, this is a moment in history where someone as uh, Lawrence Literally. O'Donnell said, you know, my, his kids don't do this. His parents didn't do this. The spoiled rotten brat was told by Nancy Pelosi, you need to get your act together. And it's mm-hmm. obvious what you're doing, that you're serving Vladimir Putin. And he said, look at this picture of her being nasty. Yeah, this is, 
uh, we've the, the the term we use here is the tribe that rubs shit in its yeah. hair, and he's the king uh, of the tribe. Yeah, he and and that is a term we use to describe people who have been in an enclosed space with only people that think like them for so long they've gotten into their head that rubbing shit in their hair is a good thing and makes them look handsome, and they have competition to see how complicated the designs can become, and then they go out in public, and everyone is horrified by these people, and those people do not understand why because the shit in their hair is, is so uh, festive. And, and it looks like a peacock and it looks like a sailing ship. And all I saw on this picture was a woman standing up to the worst president in human history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to his face in his room and him being stupid enough to think that that was a picture that made her look bad and not him. Well, and then she, and, she put it at the header of her Twitter page. Yeah. So, and it's, you know. It's it's everyone's Twitter bio at this point. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. They do not. This is this is what happens when you deal with real sociopaths. They don't understand why, you know, stomping that guy to death was a bad thing. So they're, they they come up with reasons why it was necessary or why they weren't there or whatever. But they don't fundamentally understand why what they did was bad. And they give themselves away this way. Donald Trump has no reason to hide anymore. He's the president. He gets to do whatever the fuck he wants. So why wouldn't I say, sure, we do crimes. You do them all the time. I get to do that because I'm president. They And he's surrounded by people having winnowed out anyone with any shred of conscience or decency, uh, either in his cabinet or in his party, who just let him do it. And so he's going to keep showing his ass in public and calling it the great pumpkin <laughs> until the cows come home. And everyone in the world is laughing at him, except for various foreign tyrants who think, oh, here's a chump that we can play. We can sell him the Brooklyn Bridge over and over and over again. And he's dumb enough to think he's making a deal. And his his followers are so fucked in the head, so Fox News brain dead, that they will cheer him as he destroys them. And and as I said before, they can be told by by Sean Hannity to jump at a live volcano. And they would do it. And with their dying breath, they would blame Democrats because it hurts so much. And so let's get it. Let's get it off the plate that we can work with these people at all. We can't. All right. The, the Trump administration, according to ProPublica, the Trump administration has hired a lobbyist, one lobbyist for every 14 political appointments it has made. That's 281 lobbyists, which is four times more than the Obama administration had in had six years into office. And they have former lobbyists serving uh, most often in industries which they regulated. So they're hiring the worst of the worst. They're hiring the coal mm -hmm. people to run environmental policy. You know, this is build the swamp. Everybody out there, all of your little friends who are, who are he's going to get rid of the swamp. No, he's creating a much, much larger, more insidious, more awful swamp into which we're all going to be sucked. Uh, and this from the Huffington Post, the Senate has advanced another Trump court pick rated not qualified to serve. Uh, since Trump became president, Senate Republicans have confirmed at least four lifetime federal judges who earned, quote, not qualified, unquote, ratings from the American Bar Association. For context, in his entire eight years in the White House, President Barack Obama didn't nominate anyone to be a lifetime federal judge who ha had earned a not qualified ABA rating. Of course he didn't. The acting secretary of Homeland Security, Kevin McAleen, who has been in the job six months because the last guy quit, has now quit. And that's Kirsten Nielsen. She quit, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. It, the, the last person. And this is the fourth person to serve and quit in that post under President Four Stewart. secretaries of Homeland Security in three years. Yeah, come and gone. Because he's a monster and he wants them to do monstrous things. And they all of them are terrible people, but apparently there's a limit beyond which even the worst of them won't go. And he well, wants them to go. And he also now wants them to commit crimes and go to jail for him, which a lot of people are not willing right. to do, it turns out. No, uh, turns the Trump out. administration proposed allowing logging on more than half the largest intact temperate rainforest in North America. Trump instructed federal officials to reverse longstanding limits on tree cutting in Alaska's 16.7 million acre Tongass National Forest on the grounds that it would boost the local economy. Oh, yeah. brother. Yeah. All right. Because tearing it all down and setting it on fire is good, good for, the for everybody. Economy. Yeah. Uh, so this was the week when we had the debate. Yes, we did have a debate Tuesday night. That's right. Yes, we did. And we have decided collectively, I'm not sure if you and I agree on this, that uh, insomnia was the biggest winner <laughs> of all. 
<laughs> uh, followed by and and the second biggest winner of this debate was the biggest beltway yeah. lie of all the brand new beltway yeah. lie that and this is y- you will spot this everywhere mm-hmm. this is now the new new lie it, it goes hand in glove with all the old big lie which was both sides do it and that is that the gop was a healthy sane and not at all racist party until suddenly and with no warning it went completely insane in 2016 that is absolutely the new beltway media party and line. and anyone in addition to that or as a corollary to that that the number mm-hmm. one qualification one needs in order to be a democratic president is the ability to work with republicans yes that's right if you don't and have that this is if you're week- not qualified to cross the aisle and kumbaya with republicans you don't get to be president and this is exactly the the standard they set for barack obama yeah uh, it was a it was a total failure because the Republican Party just said, no, we're never going to cooperate. And no matter what you do, no matter how far to our side you've been, we're never going to cooperate and the media will never hold us accountable for it. This week, uh, uh, Mona Sharon, uh, right wing crackpot uh, intellectual Mona Sharon said on Twitter, I have a really devastating column I'm, I'm writing about Elizabeth Warren. But first, it's pretty clear Donald Trump has to go. Yep. Uh, which exactly parallels David Brooks's column today, which I'm not going to go into, which was, I suppose we're going to have to vote for Elizabeth fucking Warren, even though she's a disaster and she'll ruin the country and she'll destroy everything and she'll make your kids gay and she'll let those crazy liberals who are into cancel culture come after your religion because they don't tolerate any religion but their own. Or any and she's going to take their all own. my stuff. She's going to take all my stuff and <laughs> give it to poors. Uh, I suppose that... Donald Trump being a traitor and wrecking the country is marginally worse than that. Of course, what Democrats should do is nominate someone who makes me happy. Right. Um, You know, my perfect candidate, because this David Brooks's uh, perfect party, remember, was the McCain-Lieberman party. Yeah, yeah. He's all... Well, they would never touch his stuff, that's for sure, right? Exactly. That's going back to the bad old days when Ned Lamont was uh, displaced by by Joe Lieber, uh, displaced Joe Lieberman in the Democratic primary for the Senate. And David Brooks lost his mind. He sure did. And wrote a whole column about how the Tom delays on one side and the net roots Tom delays on the left are yeah. equally evil and bad and tribal and awful and terrible. And he hasn't changed his fucking tune in 20 years. Well, so and, there is- and Media Matters has a post today uh, about... Uh, measuring the number of times not just fox but cnn and M- even msnbc oh yeah, yeah talk about the democratic party moving to the left yes. and never ever mentioning no how far right the republican party has moved in 30 years oh yeah uh yeah. so there's some karma going on with the republican party this week in terms yes, of their bitching about uh the process of impeachment and how dare you uh, subpoena people without our permission and subpoena uh, witnesses without a full vote of the House? And why won't you let Louis Gomert into committees that he's not a member of? And uh, it turns out that nearly all of these rules about subpoenaing witnesses uh, are written by Republicans. <laughs> and they were written when during the Clinton years, right? Yeah, because they uh, wanted to harass Bill Clinton. Well, you said Bill and- Burton with a... Bill Burton. Bill Burton yeah. subpoenaed over 1,500 witnesses at a cost of $35 million during the Clinton presidency. And he did that by ch- – they changed the rules so that he would not need a sign-off by the minority uh, lead on the committee in order to subpoena a witness. Hmm. And so he could subpoena 1,500 people. Mm-hmm. And uh, then when he left, when – uh, Bush became president when W became president. Uh-huh. Uh, the next Republican chairman of Bill, Bill Burton's committee subpoenaed three people from the yeah. Bush White House. Yeah, because everything's three. cool. Fifteen hundred cool. versus three. So mm-hmm. uh, all of these rules about subpoenaing witnesses are, were written by Republicans. And furthermore, uh, I loved Adam Schiff's letter this week, which he released to the public. Did he say, don't be a tough guy? Don't be a tough guy? Don't be a tough, guy, be a tough guy. guy, exclamation point. Yeah. <laughs> no. He said, look, uh, we are having to conduct an investigation here. We do not have a special prosecutor or the Justice Department helping us right. con- with their notes and their investigation. We have to do this ourselves. Mm-hmm. And in order to make sure 
that one witness is not hearing the testimony of yesterday's witness, right. we have to keep these uh, testimonies separate and confidential. And and also, we don't want to uh, expose anyone to the right-wing news media, first of all. Harassment. But Har- harassment. Yeah, harassment. But also, we don't want to... Uh, expose them to what other witnesses have said. That really is it. And and any prosecutor would do that, would close the door when they're talking to a witness. Uh, and so it's very interesting when Jim Jordan runs out to talk to people that he's constantly talking about the process rather right. than talking about what the witnesses says, because it's devastating to Trump. Well, and this was the week that Matt Gates tried to break into a hearing and they grabbed yes. him by the collar and tossed his ass out. Yeah. He's not on the committee. He doesn't belong there. And, you know, it is showing, I think, heroic restraint that they haven't lowjacked Devin Nunez. Right. To, to right. find out. Because, you know, every time he overhears something in the bathroom, he goes scampering up to the White House White to tell House, them right. what they're really up right. to. Right. So you have an utterly disloyal, treasonous Republican Party supporting an utterly disloyal, treasonous president. And you have this uh, Democratic Party trying to conduct actual constitutional oversight in the shadow of a party that does not believe in the Constitution or oversight at all. Uh, except as weapons when Democrats are are in power. Right. And they're doing the very best they can to strike that balance. But, you know, I would be uh, a lot more uh, intemperate um, than they are publicly. And and we probably should say uh, a little bit about temperance and her- heroism by the passing of uh, a very gigantic figure in civil rights and in American politics. Congressman Elijah Cummings passed away this week. And yeah. uh, he died too young. He wasn't yet 70 when he passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he died with his boots on. And uh, it was a good run, I got to say. It was. For him it to really be was. signing subpoenas in his hospital bed, uh, yeah. he's my hero. That's a badass. That is badass, yeah. man. That is absolutely. And and he was, all he ever wanted was equality. All he ever wanted was fairness. Yeah. yeah. And he re- every time he talked, people just shut up because this is the, this is a, a morally, um, towering figure yeah. who's speaking up on behalf of the rule of law and what's right and good. And he, again, he's, I just want to be him when I grow no, up. Honestly. I want to be half the man he is when I grow up. Seriously. Um, this week we discovered that Fox news viewers really do think that news should be a choose your own adventure story. Yeah. Well, with, with uh, Shep Smith being fired, I think we can yeah. all agree that that's what happened. Uh, yes. Fox News viewers on Twitter were just like, oh, and now we can pick other people to be fired because I don't want to hear from Chris Wallace about Trump being bad. And I don't want to hear from Geraldo Rivera about Trump being bad. And I don't want to hear from anybody else about Trump being bad. So just fire those people because I should be able to have on my conservative news network only the information Mm -hmm. and people I want to see. Mm -hmm. And when you call them out on that, there's never a response, no response, no. you know, no. other than MSNBC is just as bad. Liberals just yeah. as bad. Liberal media is even worse. Liberal media is even worse. Blue gal, liberal media hates Donald Trump and, and is deranged and crazy. And, and that's the problem with the entire process. We know what they're going to say. We know what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. We know how they're going to react. There's no surprise anymore. There's no Republican who suddenly pops off, you know, off the radar and, and is throws you for a loop because it's like, Oh, you're in that party, and yet you seem to have a conscience. There just aren't any anymore. And we have sorted ourselves into bad people in one party. And I wish it weren't true. I wish there were a nice mix of good and bad and right and wrong and shitty ideas and good ideas. But all the good people pretty much are in one party now. And all the good ideas across a huge spectrum, which is why there's so much fighting, um, are in one party right now, which is which mystifies me how Anderson Cooper ran out of questions to ask <laughs> during a debate an hour before the debate's and he over. he hadn't asked so anything if, about climate change at all. <laughs> no, not a word. And it didn't even occur to him to do so. No. So, le- Pete, Mayor Pete, can I call you Mayor Pete? If you were a tree, what kind of tree <laughs> would you be? And it just, you know, uh, and again, the, the debate itself was fine. It was substantive. I thought Bernie Sanders did a splendid he job. Did. I thought Elizabeth Warren did a splendid job. Yeah, I, I thought Tulsi Gabbard earned all of her rubles. I mean, she did a <laughs> she did a great job as the you know Russian asset on the stage. And I am still and always will be vote blue no matter who. You can't bait me into hating the Democratic candidate before we pick the Democratic candidate. Seriously. So I'm I we live in Illinois. The 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 argument will be over before primaries reach our state. 
Um, anyone on that stage, with one exception, um, who will never make it that far. Well, um, and that, okay that's what I me. saw on the stage. First of all, uh, the uh, acknowledgement in their demeanor that Elizabeth Warren is the front runner. Yes. And uh, Kamala Harris, I thought it was very interesting her talking about uh, getting Donald Trump off of Twitter. And uh, Elizabeth Warren didn't want to talk about that. Elizabeth Warren kept uh, had a very focused. Uh, yes, breaking up tech companies. Well, breaking up tech companies, but she had a very focused approach to the entire debate, which is I'm going to swing everything back around to my stump speech. And her stump speech yes. is huge in terms of the amount of things she wants to get done. Uh, but she did not want to uh, drive away from that at all. And that is a debate strategy uh, yeah, that almost fell apart on her when uh, Kamala Harris decided to talk about Trump and Twitter. Um, and she kind of smiled. Some people called it a smirk, but she kind of smiled no. as a way to sort of say, you're not getting to me. I did like how Kamala Harris approached it in a way that was, I'm confused by you not agreeing with me on this and sort of left yes. the door open yeah. for Elizabeth Warren to change her mind as I did. It, uh, it took me mm -hmm. a while to think about, well, I really don't want us senators deciding who is on Twitter and who isn't. And then I realized, well, really what Kamala Harris is saying is, Hey, Twitter enforce your own terms of service, no matter who it is. Yeah. And, and I'm speaking to someone who did two bits in Twitter uh -huh, jail. Uh-huh. And uh, and I see blue checks, especially conservative blue checks, mm -hmm. getting away with fucking murder on Twitter. Right. And so, well, and then you see Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg <clears throat> bending over backwards to allow yeah. conservative lies on his yeah. platform. Yeah, and just saying it, it just, we just can't do anything about it. It's, it's, it's just impossible. It's, it's something everyone's going to have to live with. You, Misinformation you is something everyone's going to have to live with because. You have sixty billion dollars in the bank, and you own all the technology in the Western Hemisphere, but you can't solve this problem, right? Which right. is just astonishing. Um, I'd like to talk for just a minute about Ronan Farrow's book, sure, which I haven't read. You know, um, he's going to marry a podcaster. I hope you. I hope you, he's ready you, for that because that just takes up all your time. Yeah, Ronan Farrow is is marrying uh, John Lovett, right? I believe from Pod Save America, long, which will long guarantee time relationship. They've been together yeah. almost as long as we have. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and we wish them well. Um, I understand they're registered at uh, Casper Mattress. <laughs> Sorry, that's a podcast advertising joke. Yeah. It has nothing to do with them. It's, it's... And, and Blue Apron, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Blue Apron, the Cash App. They're registered at all these all these places. No, Ronan Farrow's book is already calling, causing a lot of talk. Most of the talk I've seen written up has to do with the fact that there's details about shredding going on um at the national Enquirer, that there, all these documents got shoved down the shredder once donald trump mm -hmm. looked like he might end up in the white house which is important mm -hmm. i found the most important part of the write-up that i read i think it was in vanity fair it was very long and very good was the degree of detail into which his partner who wrote the article um went uh talking about by name the executives at msnbc and nbc mm -hmm. uh undercut him sabotage them sandbag them blame them and turns out more than likely they were being sort of blackmailed mm -hmm. by harvey weinstein right because they knew that a certain incredibly popular and prosperous morning host was a sexual predator and profitable yes and they did not want that information getting out in the public so they sort of said kill anything they they let him do the story uh, and then they started to try to kill it. It's not well published. It's not well documented enough. It's not well done enough. It's it's not there yet. No, we're snuffing it. And of course, they walked it across the street to the New Yorker, and they won a Pulitzer Prize for it. Mm -hmm. um, but it it gives it was it was relief to me almost reading this because it's like oh, these are the same. This is this is Phil Griffin, Andy Lack, um, Norm Oppenheim, I believe his name yeah. is, are the big three. These three guys at NBC and MSNBC who cave to pressure from powerful people to not put news on the news. And when I look up and I see Chuck Todd bending over backwards and sideways, not to offend powerful Republicans, right. when I see people who are absolutely unfit to be on the air, on the air all the fucking time, and no one ever asks them any questions about their past. 
it is now easier for me to put a third dimension into my analysis of what's what, wrong what with the news media. What you suspected all along, you actually have some True. confirmation. Yeah, yes. it's a parallel confirmation. Right. These aren't. This is all is not all about sexual predation, but it is about the cravenness and cowardliness and and desire to not offend the wrong people at the very top of those networks that let, that has them making news decisions. Right. That are that are not based are not based on the merits of the story. Are based entirely on it will embarrass my friends. It will cost me money, and that is how people on my long list of pundits who should never be allowed on the air are on the air. Someone these people don't wander onto the stage. No, right, on the right. Set. They're there because they're invited. They're booked. They're put in makeup. They're put in a chair. It's all staged and and put together like a story. And it does again. It's somewhat of a relief to know. Yeah, these guys really are craven assholes. Yeah, they really will kill the most important story in decades simply because they're terrified of what some powerful person might do. Yep, and and you have so, on our notes, Bravo, Chris Hayes for yeah, actually reporting on NBC, reporting on his own uh, hand that feeds. This is something that we have begged people to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when Rachel Maddow is talking about how the hell can you put Paul Wolfowitz on the air, my my answer is why don't you go down and talk to Bill Crystal? They're the same guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's 20 feet away. If right. you want to know why Republican blah, 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 why don't you go talk to Joe Scarborough? You work in the same building. And if, you, if you're not willing to, to report on obvious abscessing pustules in your own organization that we can all see, what else are you not telling us? And the answer, of course, is that, well, the guys who run the place are chicken shit liars who kill stories. To protect their rich friends, yes. Or to be blackmailed to protect their rich property in Matt Lauer. Right, Sur right. Surprise, surprise. And Chris Hayes went way out on that limb and he named names and talked about his own network and talked about, you know, the that's this is not what a news organization is supposed to do. So bravo, bravo Chris to Hayes. him. And, and mm -hmm. as great as he was in doing that, um, mm -hmm. he needs to be out of the spin room after debates because yeah. his interview with uh, Kamala Harris yeah, uh, was bad, less than bad. stellar. And yeah. uh, we love you, Chris Hayes, but really um, it's time to put him where his talent lies and not in this kind of reporting position. Also, uh -huh. if, if, if um, rumors are true and sometime three or four hours from now, you're welcoming Steve Schmidt back to the bosom <sighs> of the MSNBC family. You and I need to have a talk. Yeah. Yes, let's just yeah. say, just no. DM me direct message. <laughs> Speaking of DMs, uh, next week, we will probably have a surprise guest. I can't tell you who it is, but his name rhymes with Hal Sparks. Uh -huh. so, yeah, it rhymes mm -hmm. with Hal just, Sparks. Just everybody. say it, it Mega rhymes with Hal Sparks. Worldwide, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we, we are big fans, supporters, longtime supporters of Hal Sparks. Well, he is a friend of our podcast. He's promoted us. Um, we've seen him. We seen the, saw the Sexy Liberal Tour when you and yeah, I were together when he in was Chicago. On it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we, I listen to him when I can on Saturdays. Usually I'm out doing stuff in the community, but when I can, I listen to him. So, And he's a real honest broker and a, a smart guy. And and like like a lot of us, an, almost an accidental activist. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what being an ac accidental activist is all about. And we're, mm -hmm. we're really running out of time now, but uh, well, just a go. little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we got an email from our podcast host, Buzzsprout, and they are finally... Uh, increasing the cost yeah. of us podcasting. We have been grandfathered into a $12 a month podcast fee, which they yeah. are now quadrupling to $49 a month, which is yeah. really a shock. Uh, yeah. So if you can help us out, we are, we love Buzzsprout because their customer service is so good. We have 516 episodes now with this one on their servers uh, permanently forever. That base is included in that price of, of all of right. the you know bandwidth that we're taking, holding on to our archive, is part mm -hmm. of that. So, um, but it is going to kind of we're going to have to figure out what we do with Science Fiction University. I was going to start another account with Buzzsprout and have a totally separate podcast world for the Science Fiction University one. And it, since we now have unlimited space essentially on Buzzsprout for this huge amount of money. Uh, mm -hmm. We may just have to put everything together, which means you're going to get, if you're subscribed to us on <laughs> iTunes, you're also going to get Science Fiction University at no yeah. extra uh, button pressing. So, which, which isn't the well, worst we'll thing. We'll see the what world. happens. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how that goes. Um, mm -hmm. At any rate, we're, we're grateful to you for your support. And uh, 
we're, as I said, there's a lot of housekeeping to do to figure out what we're going to do next on that score. But we're here and your $5 a month donation makes a difference. And so if you can do that and you haven't done it, please do it. We need it. And each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is another dog. We have a dog named Roxy who turns 10 this weekend. So both Roxy and Junior Dude have birthdays this weekend. Happy birthday, Roxy. And you know, whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, uh, your pet, as well as Roxy, sit on the floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured pet food, our fake sponsor. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Roxy at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. If you are sending us an internet kitty or other pet, please put kitty in the subject line of your email. And thank you for even doing that. Even if it's that. a dog. Even if it's a even dog. If it's a dog. Even if it's a dog. Mm-hmm. Internet kitty. That way uh, I know where to find it. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And you help us pay the expenses that uh, go along with putting this podcast together. So thank you for doing that. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address, GoFundMe, Patreon, everything is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are shocked yet delighted to be on the short list for Rudy Giuliani's defense attorney. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.